Hello friends, welcome to a new 3ds Max tutorial. This is Gökçe from cgk.com and today we are going to learn about the element, element subject mode under Edit Poly uh, which will help you select the whole element. Actually you can think of an element as a uh, polygons or uh, faces that are welded to each other. So if you just go uh, add an Edit Poly, hit 5 for element and just click here, you can see that it will select the whole thing. If you just create a copy of this element holding shift, then you will see that under this object we have two separate elements. So what, whichever you click, it will be selected. Or let's weld one of the uh, verti vertices for um, demonstration purposes. I'm going to hit one, hit uh, target weld and weld this to here. You can see that if you hit five, uh, sorry, what, let's weld one more. You can see that if you hit five and click, it will select the whole thing. Okay, so um, elements are faces that are welded to each other. Let's uh, think of that uh, like that. Okay, and in element we have uh, five commands as you can see. One of them is insert vertex, which uh, from before we know that we won't use that much because it creates weird uh, edges faces. And uh, flip, uh, we know this from uh, before again. It will flip the out looking or outward face of a uh, polygon or, or if in this case uh, of a, the polygons of the whole element you can see that now it looks darker because the faces are looking inwards and if you flip again it will look normal uh, edit tri triangles mode is uh, again a an old uh, mode which will uh, which refers to edit mesh uh, it, it's here because we sometimes need to edit meshes uh, with Edit Poly, uh, but but for new modeling techniques we are not going to use this. Retriangulate is the same again with, for meshes. Okay, as you can see, these are the comments for element subject mode. Let's delete this and uh, do a an exercise as always. I guess it's a little difficult to find a, an exercise to just um, use element mode, subject mode, but uh, I will, I'm going to use this opportunity to model or do a new exercise. <laughs> you can see that, think of it like that. Uh, I guess this again is a good um, model for element um, under subject mode anyways, because we have a lot of separated elements in here. As you can see, we have different type of uh, things. So let's uh, use uh, element and other uh, edit poly modes uh, to create this uh, cupboard. And uh, I'm only going to create the uh, wooden parts, of course. Uh, you can, of course, add a glass part. It's not that hard, but I'm not going to model other stuff. So let's start with a box. I'm going to input 120 and 80. I guess this is uh, a little bit smaller, right? Let's uh, keep this 80 by 60. And the height, for the height, I'm going to input 2. I'm going to move this to the origin. Uh, as you can see, we have a little bit of a height in here, so I'm going to add uh, to uh, input 2 for the Z height. Okay. Then I'm going to add an edit poly, hit 5 for the element mode, and I'm going to select this element, hold shift, and create a copy. And you can uh, choose clone to element, that way it will create this new element in the same object uh, so that we won't have to attach it again. And I'm going to set the height to 120, it's a little bit too much. Let's set this to 100. Okay. Now I'm going to create uh, a copy. Uh, I'm, I can just move these in, uh, the vertices, I'm going to hit 1 for that, as you know. Or you can just hit 4 and select the polygon as well. And then I'm going to uh, move this up and I'm going to move this down. You can, you could also create a new um, box, but I'm, whatever, I'm going to use these uh, tools so that I can exercise on edit poly, I guess. Uh, I'm going to, as these uh, button face, this button face is selected, I'm going to move that button face to 0 in the z-axis. And then I'm going to hit S for snaps and I'm going to move this corner uh, sorry let's hit 5 and select the uh, uh, whole element and then move it here 
then I can just again do the same thing because uh, this way I moved it up a little bit. And I'm going to check the top side. I guess it looks okay. Maybe just a little bit shorter. Yeah. Okay. Uh, let's create uh, one more element from this. Uh, you can also rotate the elements, of course. Uh, if you hit A, you can use the angle snaps as well. If you hit T, you can just move this to where it should be. Uh, I can again use hit S and use the snaps uh, to just snap that uh, to the required position. Uh, I guess I can use symmetry for this model because uh, everything is symmetrical. Uh, I can just uh, change the axis to Y and flip it so that I have other um, elements uh, mirrored on the other side, I guess. Okay, I guess everything looks good. Uh, let's add the lids. Uh, I'm going to hit F for that. Uh, actually, I've modeled this. Uh, the orientation is a little bit off. Let's rotate that first, so that if you hit F, you can see this from the front view, yeah. Uh, I've now rotated it 90 degrees, so that if I hit F, I can see the front side. Uh, now, okay, let's uh, think about this a little bit. Uh, as I told you from before, uh, when you add chamfer, if you want to see these type of uh, indents, uh, seams uh, rather, uh, you need to model it uh, as it is, as like uh, as this, I guess. You don't uh, just pull a box, put a box and cut it from here or just make everything merge to each other or welded to each other. You need to create this shape, this type of shapes. To do that, I'm going to use a box. I'm going to hit S so that I can begin from here. And also I wanna just right click on the snap toggle to also enable the midpoint. Okay, I'm going to disable the grid points and also I'm going to disable the angle snaps for now. I'm going to just uh, drag this from here to here and just input a random height. Then I can just change the height to two by hand. Actually, let's do this minus two, so that it should sit uh, right where it is. Now, to model, to create a model like this, uh, I know from before that inset creates a shape similar to this. So, if I just add an edit poly in here, I can uh, choose this face and the back face, and then I can just inset these two, and you can see that we have this edge in here. So, this uh, obviously will come handy with this uh, type of thing. Uh, let's input 7, uh, maybe even 6.5, and then hit OK. Then I'm going to use bridge to create uh, an opening in here. Uh, the bridge worked because, uh, let me show that to you. If I hit Alt Q, you know that I can isolate this. Bridge worked because both sides are selected, by the way. If you just select this face and bridge, it won't work. You need to select both faces and then bridge. Uh, that will work. I know that after inset uh, max chooses the created faces for me, so I knew that both faces were selected, so I didn't have to look. Okay, now what we can do, let's hit Alt-Q again uh, to isolate this. Uh, now what I want to do, you can do this with a couple of methods. Um, let me show how I do it actually. I, um, the correct method would be separating or detaching these faces and then bridging the inner or capping the inner uh, caps, uh, gaps, sorry, and then adding a chamfer. But there could be an easier way to do this. If you hit two, you can just double click and select the loop. Then you can hit ring to select the other loops, edge loops. And then you can just add a chamfer to these edges. You can see that it instantly creates a shape like so. Uh, sorry, not chamfer, sorry, because ch with chamfer you can only add an edge, but if you hit extrude instead of that, uh, you know that extrude also creates that inner extrusion. You can set the height to uh, something like minus 0.4, and you can just set the width to something like zero, but maybe a little bit of an opening would look good. Okay, then you can add a chamfer, and you can see that instantly create something like we want okay which is very cool uh, otherwise we would uh, have to just 
detach four uh, separate objects and then cap the required uh, gaps and we would do much more work let's smooth chamfers only as well okay that way we have these seams and it looks good I guess maybe um, we can increase the chamfer amount a little bit not that much though I want these seams to be visible uh, for the demonstration purposes okay now let's create uh, these shapes I guess these are all boxes so let's go with um, a box uh, sorry first let's disable the chamfer and let's create a box like this I'm going to set the height to 2 and then I'm going to set the length to something like 2 again maybe the height should be 1 and the length should be 1 as well then I can just align this to the center then I can move it down in the z-axis yes, let's move it down uh, minus 10 centimeters create another copy uh, sorry let's create the copy with ctrl V which will create a copy in place then I can just input a number for the z-axis like 5 for example okay and then let's create another copy move this up 20 centimeters and create one more copy and move this down five centimeters maybe move both of these up five centimeters and move the, both of these down minus five centimeters so that it looks more like the model in here okay, by the way I'm going to hit, I'm hit, uh, hitting constantly I'm hitting P to go to the perspective window and hit Z to zoom extends because Max has a weird way of rotating the screen for example when you, if you are in the front view when you move it it moves it rotates a little bit weird so i'm always hitting p and z to center the model okay that's a very cool trick uh, okay let's uh, add these last details uh, i i can't really see where the seam is but i guess they are here maybe it could be like something like this as well but uh, if that is the case we could do something else but let's uh, assume that these are one piece and then these are um, added separate pieces uh, to the box so I'm going to hit uh, E and hit A as well to enable the angle sna uh, snaps hold shift and rotate this 90 degrees then I'm going to move this uh, minus 5 and minus 4 uh, in the x-axis uh, then I'm going to add an edit poly select these vertices move this up you can use uh, a line in here as well but I, I always eyeball these type of things but if you want to use a line you can just hit alt a click and then in the z-axis you want to move this to the maximum position okay and then let's create another copy with uh, Control V, then I'm going to move this 8 centimeters in the x-axis. Then I can just select this, hit 5 to say, go to the element mode. Uh, copying this with instance has a cool addition uh, or cool usefulness to us, which is we, if you go to the element mode and copy this, you can see that the instanced object uh, also looks the same with the, this model in here. So I'm going to hit 1 again, align this here uh, to the minimum position align these here to the maximum position and you can see that everything works with the other model as well then I can again go to the element mode and copy this down align this to here as well uh, I guess I need to do it with vertices minimum for the top uh, box and maximum for the bottom box okay can create two more copies uh, I, um, yeah I guess that's right uh, I guess let me delete this one and create this from here I'm going to eyeball this one I don't want to lose more time with this I can just 
move this up and move this down okay and you can see that we have that uh, kind of a model in here maybe the dimensions aren't exact but you can of course play with these as always um, then let's uh, select this go to edit poly and attach all these together okay and then I can just create another copy okay uh, if you want to add the uh, glass boxes you can just do it with just a box you don't need to even snap because these will uh, go in uh, in the faces over there in the y-axis I want to uh, place this center to center and let's make this a little bit thinner. I guess glasses have like 0.4 centimeters. Uh, actually, this is not a glass, but it's a grid, but uh, this is not the subject for this lesson, I guess. So I'm going to just continue. <laughs> uh, I'm going to align the copy of the uh, glass to the other uh, lid. I'm going to place center to center. Uh, then I can just attach these as well. Uh, let's enable the clay mode so that we can see a little, little bit better yeah and then i can just go attach this here as well uh, let's add a chamfer to this model and i'm going to as always smooth chamfers only select that uh, yeah we have a cool cupboard uh, yeah we have uh, additional uh, features like this this in here uh, you can also add those or we have a fillet in here as well we can add those as well like if I hit 2 select this uh, face uh, like a chamfer for example you can see that I have that kind of a thing in there maybe before this uh, I can show you one more cool thing uh, if you uh, a separate edit poly in here uh, you can add different details to the object for example let's do that again and you can see that by clicking hide in here you can get rid of that detail right away so uh, we usually try to model things with layers with edit poly modifiers but maybe it's a little advanced at this stage but uh, this is very cool so maybe you can get start to get used to the idea of adding different layers of edit poly uh, and I'm going to do it for uh, this side, for example. Uh, again, I will add an, a new edit poly. I'm going to two and just ring this and create two edges. Again, same thing. This time I'm going to move this up and I'm going to pinch it quite hard. I'm not going to worry about the location for now. Uh, you can see that I can select the front and back face. I'm, I'm hitting F3 to go to the uh, wireframe mode, by the way. Then I can bridge these. And, uh, and then you can just chamfer these edges. Uh, of course, it creates weird edges like these. Uh, they are not quads. Uh, but we could do it with uh, turbo smooth as well but it's a little bit advanced uh, right now so i will use this type of thing and uh, this is the all this is also the reason why i'm using a separate a poly pass because if uh, there is a mistake it would be very hard to come back from this one but it just hide this and you can um, start from scratch or delete you can also delete it as well by the way okay yeah is cool um, okay we have a problem with chamfering here uh, let you can add a new layer of edit poly for this and just move the vertex this vertex in here down a little bit uh, but uh, we could also make the chamfer a little bit smaller as well uh, or even we could create this opening uh, with a different method as well let's uh, try something else I'm going to do it uh, a little bit 
quickly. But this could also be the case for this exercise. Uh, up to this point, everything's the same, but uh, after this, you could just uh, insert more edges. I guess I'm not going to finish that up because the first method is quite good enough for now but you could uh, just pull this in for example and you can see that we have a rounded edge over there as well uh, this is more manual than chamfer of course chamfer is a little bit easier uh, but it doesn't cause those type of problems as you can see but I guess the best method would be to model that with uh, turbo smooth one we will talk about that in the upcoming lessons okay this was a cool model uh, thanks for listening i had a lot of fun doing this lesson i hope you did too if you had fun and learned uh, new things then please hit the like button hit the subscribe button hit the notification bell next to the subscribe button thanks for listening see you in the next lesson